So um, one of our launch pad, one of the CHFA launch pad finalists that we have is Sujela. She runs um, she runs a, a pretty cool brand called Rainfed. Um, there's just some, uh, it's just this really cool product. It's the world's first millet based milk. Um, and, uh, it's, you know, Kenny and I were looking through this. It's, it's pretty interesting, pretty interesting product with a pretty interesting position. So, um, so we're excited to have you on, um, congratulations for being a finalist. Um, we'd love it if you told us a little bit about you and then, um, a little bit about the product and the brand. Sure. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, a little bit about me. I am a former dairy scientist who uh, has been working in the food industry more recently in the dairy industry for a long time and left that role uh, to start uh, the entrepreneurial journey. And that has led me to founding Rain Fed Foods in, in 20 in the middle of uh, the pandemic. Um, I, I mean, I started the company for a few reasons, one being We've all heard about the impact of um, uh, emissions and climate change on our current food systems and that it's just not sustainable to continue to produce food the way we do at the moment. So things need to change. It's not an option of do we need plant-based foods or not. Pretty soon it is going to be necessary to uh, to focus on some of the alternative crops and ingredients. and talking about alternative crops, you know, especially in North America, 75% of what we grow comes from just a handful of crops like soy, wheat, corn. And that's just not for not good for the soil and not good for our bodies either. And um, with the experience in the food industry that I had, I decided to uh, want to make a meaningful impact and do something uh, with my with my education and experience. And um, despite there being many alternatives in the plant milk space, I noticed that there isn't really one product that delivers on everything, like taste, nutritional profile, uh, functionality. So wanted to address that problem, but not necessarily using the same ingredients that everyone is using. Wanted to focus on ingredients that are better for the soil, better for the farmers and better for consumers. And that's how millets came into the picture. Millets are ancient grains that's that we've been growing for a number of years, but relatively little has been done in terms of uh, human consumption of millets, uh, particularly uh, again in the US and Canada. In countries like India, where I grew up, millet, millet used to be a very mainstream crop and even in India, since the Green Revolution, that kind of faded a little bit. So wanted to use the power of innovation and food science to really address the gaps and challenges in the current food system by creating uh, this product that is now rain-fed milk. And our milk has eight grams of protein and same calcium like cow's milk. And it tastes delicious. It doesn't have any fillers or gums that consumers are lately wary of seeing in some of these alternatives and no added sugars and um, and it, it, it you can um, steam it, uh, foam it, cook with it, uh, blend it in your smoothies, uh, drink a cup of it. It's very delicious and uh, it's one and all, which is why our tagline is going to be the only milk you're gonna need in your fridge because I'm sure we, we all know at least one person uh, that is buying a few different milks to satisfy the needs of either different applications or different members in their households. So we want to eliminate that. That's yeah, actually both of us. So, you know, we're, we're just literally talking the before conversation we before we came I said, I've got, oat, I've got oat, dairy, and almond in the fridge right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Well, and, and then sometimes I've got soy milk in my fridge too. So sometimes I'm right up to four. So. <laughs> You went so millet was used in the old country when you were growing up. Mm -hmm. Did what was it like? I'm, I'm trying to understand. Like, how did you get to? How did you get to? Is it is it normally used to, as a as a drink or or, yeah. or put so, into a drink or? Yeah, millet is millet is used in many different forms. So the very popular, I would say, uh, 
uses porridge for breakfast. Milk okay, well, okay. for breakfast was a thing. Um, <clears throat> even in uh, some uh, some countries in Europe, like countries like Germany, apparently, uh, millet porridge made with apple juice is like a very traditional thing that people used to do. Really? So uh, it's been consumed in different countries in different applications. Hmm. It can also be cooked and eaten as a side uh, instead of rice or potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really healthy grain because it's low glycemic. So it okay. doesn't spike your blood sugar like rice or potato would. Mm -hmm. So hmm. it, it's also clinically proven to uh, reverse diabetes if consumed regularly. Okay. And the, the other beauty of millets is that it's not just one grain. So you don't have to eat the same boring grain every day. There is many different varieties. They all look different, taste different, and have a different nutritional profile. So you're adding diversity to your diet when you switch between different varieties of millets, obviously, if you're cooking with it. Right. Um, where we're focused on is uh, in North America, it's a very unfamiliar grain. The questions you asked me, it's not the first time I've been asked that. Um, we grow some millets here, but it's primarily used as an ingredient in bird seed applications or animal feed. I so think an animal really feed is where I where I I think I was going. Like you know, obviously barley and stuff is here. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of your comes. I just don't don't hear millet being used a lot in anything. Right. Yeah. And I'm really even trying to understand how you got to like how'd you get to milk? Why didn't you just and this is just curious, right? Is yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. For why sure. not yeah. make it into like a rice and say, listen, you know what? People should mm -hmm. eat millet and they mm -hmm. don't in North America. So I'm gonna package it like rice or pasta because they all get that and maybe that's where i go like to go to but, milk is but you don't know maybe she's that's one of her line extensions you just screwed oh. it up for her yeah it, uh, it's totally maybe i gave her the idea <laughs> 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 so we're uh so uh, milk is our first product because we really wanted to give people something that they can instantly try that Fair without the, they don't have to no you know, cooking. put any effort into cooking, right. the, which is why. And then milk is also a good category in the sense that we use it in many different applications. So whether it's coffee, cereal, or cooking, right. uh, it's a format anyone can easily try in many different ways. So uh, and a popular way to get people to try it, which is why we're starting with milk. And the fact that there is a need in this space, especially like Speaking to a lot of uh, families, they want uh, they want to switch milk uh, because I mean lactose intolerance is also on the rise, right? And then mm -hmm. uh, especially moms are not happy with giving their kids oat milk because it doesn't have any nutrition. So right. there is a missing uh, need uh, in that space, and I wanted to use my experience in the dairy industry to really solve that problem. So it all kind of came together. With that being said, we have a technology. Uh, we created this over the last two and a half years, uh, right from creating recipes from scratch to experimenting this on large scale facilities for validating and validating the scalability of the manufacturing process to like shelf life and all those things. We realized that the technology that we have can also produce ingredients. Uh, it's a millet concentrate that can mm. be used in a number of different recipes, which we're going to start exploring and working with some other businesses that we can sell that ingredient to in the near future. Interesting. Can we grow enough millet? We grow a lot of millet, but the thing is, uh, we don't grow some of the right varieties that we need because uh, especially for milk, the flavor is really key. Mm -hmm. So we had to source some of the varieties from India. Right. But we also need to show the farmers that there is a demand for millets here, and then they will be happy to grow the right varieties. Um, right. And and the other important uh, fact is that uh, this is the international year of millet declared by the UNFAO. So we're sitting here really? in 2023. Yeah. Who the hell knew all this stuff, eh, Phil? <laughs> Jeez. No, not at all. Interesting. Actually, this and is we're, awesome. And, and we're like, because we're, a, you know, with the wheat belt, I mean, we can grow mm -hmm. millet well in mm -hmm. North America, uh, Canada states. Yeah. There's so no the climate is good. Climate's okay, okay. for, yeah. and varieties, I'm assuming some would grow better, maybe yeah. more south and some better more north, but there's some 
potential yeah, diversity of, of easy crop to grow. They're oh, one of the most drought tolerant crops, which is also oh, which is important, important today. Yeah, we chose mm -hmm. to work with millets, mm -hmm. and uh, in, they also are good at really fixing nitrogen in the soil. So it actually improves soil health, and they grow in like forty five to sixty days. So we don't. Uh, have so how many one crop a year though? Uh, no, we can uh, rotate the crops and um, doesn't have to. Uh, just rely on monocropping some of the really? crops currently grow that take a long oh. time. Yeah. Well, so you could do potentially like, like remember we're yes. Canadians, right? Our season, you know, we got that. Yeah. yeah we can the shoulders are a little bit cold. Canadian. Yeah. But, so we could potentially grow two crops yes. within a cycle. Yes. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's kind of fascinating wow. too. That's, that's interesting. Wow. Shoot, very who interesting. Knew? Who knew? Who knew? So, uh, yeah, not us. Was, there, I, there was even like a poem that dates back to thousands of years ago in Chinese about millets. So there's a lot of fascinating information about millets. And uh, Interesting. my goal is to yeah make millets more mainstream and uh, really help people understand the health benefits of it, the nutritional benefits of mm. it, and um, showcase uh, how delicious this could be. So and we'll be able to try this obviously at the, yes, at the show you. next week. Yes. And yes. if I'm out in the stores, if I'm in because I'm in Vancouver, mm -hmm. Phil's in Mississauga. Mm -hmm. um, where uh, where do we right find now, this? Uh, right now, please sign up for our newsletter and followers socials. Uh, where we just uh, we're just about to launch at the show. Uh, it will be just a few more weeks before we hit stores and retail. Interesting. We'll and who are you using to get the store? How are you distributors or? Uh, yeah, through distributors. Good for you. Exciting. What's, that's very exciting. So What's the retail going to be? Uh, E-commerce channel partners in uh, May. Okay. And then we'll enter retail a few weeks after that. Okay. okay. And what kind of okay. retail are you looking at for the product? Just so we uh, get an idea. We'll start with specialty and uh, natural grocers yep. for the first few months and then okay. Uh, mainstream. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, oh, well, good luck. That's that's you. pretty. Yeah. I, I learned more about millet in the last 15 minutes than I've learned in my entire lifetime. That's <laughs> that's cool. Wow. Just keep educating more people about it. Like we need to do. Yeah. We need yeah. to be mindful of um, some of the food choices and habits that we make uh, going forward. If, for uh, sure. You know, if we want to continue to feed the growing population. Just well, the fact that you can grow it twice food. in the season, the fact that it's drought resistant. I mean, mm -hmm. there's and, a lot of pluses. Super. It doesn't consume any uh, inputs. So you don't need pesticides or fertilizers. It grows naturally, organically, like high pest resistance, high disease really? resistance. So it's a cheaper crop to grow. Um, and farmers can make a decent profit out yeah. of it. And um, so in turn for consumers, it's not an expensive. Um, but but diet wise too, I think like this idea that, you know, consuming this long-term can help you reverse diabetes. Cause I heard that, like that stuck out for me, the sugar spikes yeah, and all too. those sort of things. Right. So I yeah. think interesting. that's a very interesting option. Huh. Um, thank you for doing this. Thanks for coming um, on. That was yeah. fascinating. And we'll see you at the and show. And then good yes. luck and yeah. launch Please pad. Come try the try the milk. Oh, we'll definitely will be there. Yeah. 100%. We'll, we'll be there. That's this has made an impression on us. So for sure. Oh. Awesome. Good for you. Thank you so cool. much. Thank you Sounds for the time. All right. See you next week. Bye. Ciao. Bye.